Pakistan. Play about to begin. Our first commentators, Ramiz Raja, and with him, Athra Ali Khan. Well, Yasir Ramiz, there's seven matches for him. 203 runs, 100 in the last game. And the strike rate, I'm sure, will get better as he starts opening more and more for Pakistan. And that's Mohamed Afiz uh, that we told you about. Has the good touch and very stylish right-handed opening batsman. 14 matches for him and an average of 23.5 and a strike rate of 53. So Mohamed Afiz will perhaps feel that he needs a big one. He's got good starts but just hasn't got the big one for his team. There is Hasibul Hussain, first match for him in this series. He'll be starting proceedings here. Hasibul Hussain, bought in for the one days, has been given the new ball from the golf course end. It is not an auspicious start. The wide ball, the first ball ball, so we uh, still do not have a legal delivery ball. Pakistan won the toss and uh, Inzamamulak straight away elected to bat on uh, what appears to be a flat track. Inzamam seems to do, be doing well as a captain, Atha, because he remembered the names of his uh, team players this time. He forgot them last time when I interviewed him. Another wide one. This is not what the Bangladesh has wanted, not what uh, Khalid Mahmood wanted. They must have had a long chat after that uh, pretty ordinary effort in the last one there. Pakistan put up their highest score against Bangladesh in uh, that Multan one there. Another wide one, but this time Alim Dar doesn't make a, a decision. But I thought Bangladesh need to get off to a good solid start here, as was uh, as was described by Khalid Mahmood uh, in his interview. Alim Dar is uh, out there in company with Russell Tiffin. Yeah, they need to start good, there, but uh, not by bowling wide would be a right idea. I think uh, the line has to be more disciplined. On a flat track like this, there is a little bit of movement of the seam. Uh, the first three deliveries, even though the first two ones were wide ones, but I could sense that there was some lateral movement. So that might be a good idea if uh, Hasibul Hussain can just bring uh, the deliveries much closer to the batsman, make them play because he's got a two slips, uh, just the two slips in the catching position, and he needs to make sure that he bowls on the off stump line. That's a nice crisp shot to get off the mark. It's a lovely shot through mid-wicket. Mohamed Afiz uh, in touch straight away with that lovely shot through, through uh, the onside. Parks enough to a flying start. Two wide and a half folly on his legs. And what a beautiful shot. Right on, on his toes. Hit it very nicely. Did not hit it, try to hit it very hard. It was the timing. And I think the outfield is lightning fast. Raced over to the boundary. Just uh, roll of the wrist and away it went. <laughs> well, it's a massive uh, crowd here in uh, Faisalabad. Conditions are uneasy because it is hot, the sun is out. The air is still, but uh, they're still out there in the shades. They must be enjoying this because uh, after that Inzamam innings, the interest seemed to have uh, increased a great deal in the series. Well, Ramiz on a flat track like this, uh, which is uh, very good for batting conditions, the discipline in bowling needs to be... Uh, really really good they need to bowl 
on the stump, stump to stump basis. Any width of or any ball pitched uh, up to the batsman will be driven. Anything short will be cut. So they need to show a lot more discipline than what uh, we saw in the first one days. Pakistan six without a wicket. That's gone through square leg. No need to run for that one. There's a chase, but uh, in vain. Wrong line from Mashaf Mutaza and Yasser Hamid who will not let the, those go by easily. Well, Yasser Hamid, as we've seen earlier, that he's very strong on the leg side. Anything pitched on the other middle stum, that was short as well. The length was not right. Picked up very nicely, and uh, the outfield is really fast. So anything you put in the middle of the bat is going to go over to the boundary until it goes straight to the fielder. He's found the gap and he's uh, found it to precision. Yasser Hamid would have enjoyed that. Minimum of effort with good result. Too much wit on that occasion from Hasibul Hussain. Yasser Hamid played that beautifully. Took the gap right in the middle of point and gully and kept the bell ball down. That's a good shot. Hasibul once again a little wide and uh, Yasser Hamid has uh, now got two fours. Once again that range, this is nicely stopped. Feeling uh, has got to be committed out there to support bowling on this flat track. 19 without a wicket. First ODI, 35 fours and six sixes hit by Pakistan. It was uh, an innings uh, that uh, buried Bangladesh out of the game. Pakistan got 64 from the last four overs in Multan. That's uh, dropped. A setup missed. That uh, could very well turn out to be a costly miss. Alok Kapali, who uh, saved uh, a certain four in the last over, missing a straightforward chance. Well, that's where Bangladesh goes wrong. They put up a brilliant uh, effort in the field, and look at that. Should have just scuffed it down. It's a sitter, as you mentioned. That just might be a little bit too costly because the batsman who offered that chance is none other than Yasser Hamid, who has been in terrific form. A little bit more cautious this time, Yasser Hamid. Laps in concentration, that could be one reason for that shot. He's been middling everything, he's been in good form, but careless shots can um, easily make you throw away your good form. This was a careless shot. Hello, Kapali was on the move, didn't balance himself properly, and the ball was put down. Well, the point you were making that if you don't pick up the singles, uh, then it just gets to get big on your head, and maybe that was the reason why Yasser uh, tried uh, to play that shot on the up, ended the over. Could have been a very good one for Bangladesh. Park some 21 for none. And that's where he has to transfer his experience. He's got to sit down with Yasser Ramid and has to tell him, look, don't have to be impetuous. Just try and play yourself in for a little while and then back yourself up in order to play your strokes. I'm sure Javed will do that. He's a very good coach. Quite start by these Pakistani openers. Almost seven overs. They're going to be completed. They've only picked up 23 runs. It's not that the Pakistani batsmen, they are playing badly. But it's the Bangladeshi bowlers. They're maintaining a very tight line of length. Learn their lesson from the first game. Playing his comeback game. That's beautifully struck. Half stopped at extra cover by Habibul Bashar. Three of the over. Pakistan after seven overs, 24 without loss. This will go to the boundary line. That's a beautiful stroke. Second boundary for Mohammed Hafiz. 
just getting onto the boundary rope. And that's where Mohammed Afiz is so good. Not a great flourish of the bat. Just timed the ball enough to send the ball towards the boundary. Not a great follow through on that occasion. But the timing was superb. Now this shot show how good the pitch is. Simple timing. The length was up. He just placed it between the two fielders. And so far he had two boundaries in his 12 runs. And uh, Murtaza has to be a little bit more shorter. A little bit. But he was. And he's been punished. Well, that was outside the off stump. The ball the batsman waiting for. The Pakistani love to play the cut shot. Drive. And they are really found to play outside the off stump. This one again shot. But a lot of room for Hafiz to play that beautiful square cut. And it was hit so hard that the batsman, the fielder, did try it. But no chance for the fielders. Well, it was the room which Mohammed Hafiz enjoyed. Third boundary for him. Well, it's very difficult proposition for the bowlers to bowl in one-day international, especially on uh, pitches where the ball comes onto the bat very nicely. Although the white ball always swings and seams, but still they find it very difficult because. Uh, the fielding restrictions they are on within the 15 overs they are not allowed to have more than two fieldsmen on the boundary line and if you don't if you're not allowed to have quite a few fieldsmen at the boundary line you've got to be very precise with your line and length they have strengthened the offside field they have taken off the slip and they have placed the short mid wicket the second catcher Flying towards third man. Nine of the over. Pakistan, 33 without loss. Apesh. But safe. Fourth boundary for Hafiz. He's breaking loose. Well, this time it was short, as we have already discussed the pitch which is slow you can't afford to bowl short on these tracks and uh, when Hafiz is would love to play that full shot it was a very interesting looking full shot at the last moment he placed it there as there is only two fielder behind the circle so it's plenty of room for this kind of shots so another four for Hafiz Look at that again. Once again, Apesh. Is he dropped? Rajan Sali is one of the best fielders in the uh, Bangladesh side. As I said earlier, they are playing too many shots. They have to control themselves. Well, I think uh, that's where uh, the captain of the Bangladeshi team really has to react. Most mm -hmm. of the fieldsmen, they are coming from the edge of the circle. And had that fieldsman just up one or two paces, would have been an easy catch. But still, at this level, you've got to pick up these catches that was easy another let off both the Pakistani openers they've been dropped given a life good over four of the over Pakistan 37 without loss got him needless stroke from Yasser Hamid and he had to pay the price Mushfiqur Rahman has struck for Bangladesh's important wicket well, there is nothing for the fast bowlers in this track and if the batsmen can stay there they can have a lot of fun batting but uh, I think it's overconfidence Yasir Hamid going for it using his feet missing the line of the ball straight ball and his bowl Pakistan losing their first wicket Yasir Hamid has scored 100 is out for 15 and Pakistan is 45 for one Yusuf Johanna the next man in has an excellent average in one day international and the most important thing, the strike rate is beyond 70. 
and that is the reason why he has arrived at the crease. Impetuosity has taken the best of Yasser Amid without taking any measures of the bowling of Mushafiq Rahman. He went after it, and the bowler has struck, knocking off the leg stump. And that was the breakthrough these Bangladeshis they were looking for. Huge shout straight away. It was the case of pad hitting the ball hitting the pad first and then the bat. Needless run has been given to the Pakistani team and Yusuf Johanna is off the mark. Well, this is the best the bowlers can do on this kind of tracks which they're going to face throughout the Pakistan series and that's good stop by Rajan but uh, the batsman was there but sloppy feeling by the Bangladeshi they are giving uh, too many singles like this some uh, all extras like this will build up in the end so they have to show some discipline in the field once, sure. again, sure. once again for the batsman there is no final leg they're going to have the stationary fielder at short final leg and the bowler has to bowl to a very tight line This neck has picked up second wicket in this over. What an over this has been. Once again, too many shots outside the off term. That ball had a little lift, got a little bit of lift from the pitch. Might be because he's bowling his first over. And uh, we can see when uh, Rahman bowl outside the off term, a little bit of lift, got a neck straight to the keeper. And Pakistan lost his second wicket. Must be very excited to get wickets on this track. And Mohammad Afiz is out after scoring 26. And Pakistan lost the second wicket for 46. Well, the most uh, prolific batsman in the Pakistan's history of one internationals, Inzamam ul Haq, and he's the captain. Got a job to do because they have lost two wickets in quick su succession. Nice and straight. And the Inzamam power behind it. This is good batsmanship. A very fine shot from Yusuf Yuana. Very strong on the onside. Picking that gap between mid on and mid wicket very nicely for two runs. Wearing a handkerchief around his neck, Yusuf Shwana. I can tell you it's very warm outside there. It's not easy for the bowlers also. Actually, it's uh, caught us by surprise, the warmth and the humidity here. Because when we came uh, out last night in Faisalabad, it seemed pretty pleasant. And we thought it's going to be an improvement over Multan and uh, Peshawar. But it's turned out to be hotter than in Multan. So as a result, you can see the cricketers wearing those uh, cold collars around their neck. Nicely played. Running the first one hard, looking for the second. Good cricket from Johanna. In Zamam, uh, must be feeling very confident uh, after that win at Multan as a captain. And uh, his innings also at Multan, followed by one of the gems in the test matches. Well, he completed 9,000 runs in the last match when he got to 43. Strike rate of 71.8. And that's how he strikes the ball. It didn't come out the middle of the bat. It wasn't short enough. So he had to quickly get into position. But nobody in the deep, so very safe shot to get a couple of runs and bring up the end of the over. Pakistan 67 for 2. And that was the opportunity. A bad delivery. He was looking for a Yorker. Turning out to be a full toss. Easy pickings for Yusuf Johanna. First boundary in 10 overs. 
lost the toe on that occasion. It was opened up and dip of the shoulder enabled Yusuf Johanna to execute that stroke perfectly. Oh, nicely played. He knew that slip was not there. He knew the third one was there. Played it so fine and so late. That is a class shot by Yusuf Yana. Could have gone wrong. Was not really far away from the keeper. But he had a lot of bad on it. Made sure that he was away from the keeper. Death touch. Waited and then opening the face of the bat in the last moment. And Jamal Haq taking the aerial route. That was a good stroke from Yusuf Johanna. Brings up the 100 for the Pakistani team. And in the process, they have lost only two wickets. <laughs> Straight away, attacking. On the, on the best bowler in the Bangladeshi lineup. Getting a boundary, the fifth one. In three overs. That's a huge shot. Just pick the length right and hit it on top of the mid wicket for four runs. Well, he's cutting loose in Zamam. Pakistan have got plenty of wickets in hand. But the uh, bowling has been tight. It's nicely carved away. This is an excellent shot from in Zamam. Like he's not running hard because he knows that he's found the gap. The Kamran Akmar was safely home. Got to be very careful, these two Pakistani batsmen. Yusuf Yohana straight away saying no to his partner. And Kamran Akmar, young man, very strong lad, coming back easily, taking the aerial route, but straight to the fieldsman. Single of the last ball, three runs of the over. Pakistan 188 for six. 192 for six. Ideally, Pakistan would have liked about six uh, wickets in hand, but uh, things haven't gone according to plans here. On a good batting pitch, quick outfield, it's not a big ground. Open the face of the bat. Good cricket. Rolling on to the practice pitch uh, meant an opportunity to come back for the third for Yohana. The umpire is not very watchful about the running between the wicket, making sure that the batsmen stay off the pitch. There you can see Tiffin asking Akmal to stay off the pitch. He's had a tough day at the office, Russell Tiffin. I think he got one wrong today. It would be fair to say that he's not had a good series, Russell Tiffin. It's something you talk about cricketers after the series. You say, well, he's not had a good series. Uh, same can be said about umpires. Not had a good one, Russell Tiffin. The important thing for any performer is... Uh, it should be just the one-off. Not had a good series. It should just be a one-off. Can't be consistently bad in series. So that is acceptable. Yeah, let's hope it doesn't turn out to be a key moment. That will really hurt Bangladesh big time. Partnership 20 of 34 balls. Pakistan need to do a lot better from uh, this stage onwards to uh, challenge Bangladesh. We know that they can be very determined as a unit. One ninety eight for six. The captain gets a switch of ends for himself. Is now coming from the golf course end, bowled his first spell from the pavilion end. Came in at a difficult time 
Khalid Mahmood did uh, pretty well in his first spell, but now these are easier times. Bowl six overs for 22 in the first spell. Kamran Akmal can hit the ball hard. Yusuf Johanna is not looking at his partner, he's just lost his bat. He was used as a pinch hitter in uh, Zimbabwe recently in the one days. And that single also gets Pakistan, they're 200, six wickets down, few overs left now. We know that Yusuf Johanna can pace his innings uh, to almost a perfection way and uh, he'll be looking really to up the tempo. Bangladesh really making things hard for Pakistan. They've not given them any easy runs. The feeling has uh, been very decent at times, uh, scintillating. A couple of good catches taken. Easy pickings. That's a loose delivery from the captain. The fine leg is up in the circle. So that's suicidal. Kamran Akmal can hit the ball extremely hard. This was pretty easy. Change of pace from the bowler. I think that is where uh, everything went wrong. Very risky, really, to uh, experiment at this stage of the innings. This is much better. Fuller in length. Good backing up, but uh, he'll concede that single. Tried his best to get behind that throw. That boundary that came up uh, prior to the last ball was the first boundary in 10 overs. That's the kind of uh, control Bangladesh have had over the Pakistani batsmen. Directed. There have been a close call. Good effort by the man backing up. It was a hard throw to his left. Slow in the air. He's going to push the fielder. Looking for two. But it's a, it's a good over for Pakistan. 10 runs coming off it. 208 for six. <laughs> Pull shot, trying to find the gap in the deep, can't do so. Quite right, the umpire is very concerned about the batsman running on the pitch. And of course, a playing condition has been introduced uh, quite a few months back. In fact, maybe two years back it was introduced where a batsman or the, the batting side could be penalized for excessive running on the pitch and damaging the pitch. A bit of a misunderstanding between the two fielders which meant uh, two comfortable runs for Johanna. It was the pace from Johanna's bat that uh, got the fielders uh, in a tricky position there, a little bit of football there. That didn't help uh, the man coming in to stop that ball. A good late cut. I think it should go all the way. No, might just slow down. Now Rafiq hasn't been able to drag it back. So that's for delightful runs for Mihana. He moves into the 90s. Mohamed Rafiq still probably concerned about his groin injury. Didn't go after it. He had a fast pace. He was uh, after the ball, but not a convincing effort in the end. Johanna now 92. He's already got eight one-day hundreds. This would be his second against Bangladesh. And he would be extremely lucky, Sanjay, to uh, get his 100 because there's a clear case of caught behind, not given by the umpire. Yeah, I thought Johanna didn't quite middle that one. And our friend Atur Ali Khan wasn't too happy. And understandably so, that's, I think, more than a not so good decision. It's the time when it comes. At a crucial juncture when would have been just the perfect dream wicket for Bangladesh. Johanna well said, looking to take his team to some safety here in the total. And he got a reprieve. A very lucky break, really, for Pakistan at that time. Four overs to go now. Pakistan, 217 for six. Akmal on 20 from 26 balls. It could uh, very well end up to be 
A good productive innings for Pakistan. Yohan on 94, just six away from uh, yet another one day hundred. And this partnership vital for Pakistan. It has been good 44 of 53 balls. But they need to just carry on a little bit further. 4.7 per over. If they get to 250, they'll end up with five and over. Uh, can't be really called a catch. It was a very fine cut by Johanna. He's trying to play it very fine to ensure a boundary because he knew there was a fielder there at short third. A big deflection, not really a catch. Well, he's a stylist. And this was uh, nicely played. You had to be extremely uh, good with your reflexes to uh, take uh, that kind of a nick. Late cut, very late cut. Kamran Akmal, well, he'll be eyeing the big one here. Big six. Down the track, and it's a biggie. It's gone. That also raises the 50 partnership and that also gets the crowd on their feet. <laughs> That's an enormous hit. It's just about two yards away from us. And we are virtually on the, what, fifth floor? That's a big one. It's tall and it's gone long. He gave everything behind it. Here's another one. Now, it's going straight down the throat of the field up. I think it's Alok Kapali there in the deep. And Mohamed Ashraful takes a good catch. So really it was a one-shot wonder there from Kamran Akmal. And Pakistan getting close to 240-250 here, which might turn out to be a good total. This wasn't as uh, monster or monstrous as the earlier one. Couldn't clear the man. Mohamed Ashraful uh, steadied himself and uh, got it under control. Gone for 26, 230 for 7. Junaid Zia in his second uh, one day international comes out to bat. Didn't see him with the bat in the first innings or rather the first match. That straighter delivery from Saleh has been working beautifully for him today. Looking for a big one through mid wicket, didn't middle it. Extra bit of bounce, no problems for the fielder. Yohana gets closer to his 100. Saleh has picked up three wickets now in this uh, spell. 231 for seven. Easily done. And also keep the strike, Yohana. So that's 900 for Yusuf Yohana in one day international cricket and is second against this opposition. Big one. Big and straight. And it's landed on the advertising hoarding. Great start to the over for Pakistan. Uh, may not have got enough bat on it. Yeah, it's taken. Long gone takes the catch. It's Mushfikur Rehman, the fielders. So Yohana is dismissed after having played a marvelous innings. Yes, a tremendous effort under heat, under pressure. This was uh, the high full toss and uh, they're very difficult really to uh, fetch over the boundary line. You have to middle them well and Yohana couldn't middle it. Right down the throat of the long on fielder. Classic knock, 106, 240 for eight.
Zia gets a single. Off a full toss to long on. Yusuf Johanna getting a hundred and immediately hitting a straight six. And the ball after that was a high full toss. And as you said, Rami is not easy to get those out of the way. Again, looking for a second consecutive six, only to find Musfiku Rahman there in the dip. Getting the high part of the bat, Johanna. Nowhere near the middle. And just uh, scooped up. Got the height, not the distance. All these dot deliveries will uh, mean a great deal in the end. This is how Johanna was dismissed. Looking for a big six over long on this time. He had earlier hit a magnificent six through long off. Mashfiku Rahman had no problems. Had plenty of time to see it. The run rate still uh, under five, but we know that Pakistan have got the bowling resources to trouble Bangladesh. But, uh, it's the cricket on the day that will uh, win the game, and if Bangladesh can uh, play solid cricket, and if it is their day, well, who knows, they uh, may beat Pakistan, may win a one-day game after the 99 World Cup. Smart cricket by Janezia. He was the non-striker and he saw Shabir Ahmed not making contact, but he was well prepared for this. Wicketkeeper had no chance. Couldn't have, uh, well, didn't have the time to take his glove off, so the throw was always going to be inaccurate. So good thinking by the youngster. So he's facing the last ball of the innings. Pakistan 242 for eight. Another by take it. Trying uh, to get a wicket of the last ball was Murtaza with a direct hit. So another by signal. So Pakistan end up with 243 for eight in their 50 overs. Well, after getting 323 in the last match, Pakistan would be disappointed with this batting performance. 243 for 8 in their 50 overs. Johanna was simply superb. 106 he got and 41 from Inzamar and a good contribution down the order by Akmal. Well, if uh, Bangladesh uh, don't bat as well, they might just struggle to get there. But uh, their bowling was good today. Certainly an improvement from the last match. As many as seven bowlers used by Bangladesh. And their best bowler, three for 40, Rajan Saleh. And that was a good move by the captain to get him on with his off spinners. So Bangladesh, when they come out after lunch, will have to get 244 of their 50 overs at 4.9 runs per over. Habib al Bashar has come out to open with uh, Mohamed Ashraful. So it's the same opening pair that started the Bangladesh innings in the last match. Mohamed Ashraful hasn't quite carried on after that 77 in the test match. But Habibul Bashir at the other end has been consistent. And he's one wicket that Pakistan will desperately seek, especially early in the innings. Time now to cross over to our commentators. It's going to be Amir Sohel and with him Athar Ali Khan. Thank you, Sanjay. It was very uh, nice to uh, hear your thoughts. But Omar Gol. Has to fire away along with Shabir with the new ball. They have to make early inroads into the Bangladeshi lineup. And if you talk about the Bangladeshi perspective, they really have to capitalize on the hardness of the ball. And if they pair off quite nicely in this one, then it'll be very difficult for the Pakistani bowlers to keep them quiet. But if the Pakistani bowlers they make use of uh, the new ball. To make the new ball count then when the ball will grow old it'll be very difficult for the batsman to hit the ball into the gaps very interesting passage of the play these 15 overs they'll enable us to predict what is going to be the outcome of this game Ashraful who was picked up by Omar Gol in the first one day on the first delivery it's a brave move he's taking the first delivery It's a wide. The extras, they're not going to help the Pakistani cause. They haven't put a huge total on the board. Gave away 33 extras in the first game, these Pakistani bowlers. 
They've got to be very meticulous about the line length in this game. Important opening spell. I think it's uh, Bangladesh has a very realistic chance of uh, going past this target of 243. Interesting to hear from Ramiz Raja that uh, to do that you need to have uh, the top order to click. And none better, better than uh, Mohammad Ashraful on strike and uh, Habibul Basha. Since they're opening the batting, they have been in uh, rich vein of forms, especially Habibul Basha, even though Mohammad Ashraful did not continue to score runs after scoring that brilliant 77. But this is the right opportunity. And if they can could give a good solid start, I think uh, Bangladesh fortunes in the one-day cricket can change. Well, so far they have only... Uh managed to win three games in their history of one internationals and the one was against pakistan in 99 world cup at north ends and then uh, they won a game uh, in that particular world cup against the scottish team and then against kenya and after that they haven't got the luck that's a good stroke using the pace but still the ball is not going to cross over the boundary line. Yasser Amid giving the chase. Three runs have been scored. And Ashraful is away. Good positive start for Mohamed Ashraful. It's good to see how what kind of strategy these two batsmen have. Look at that shot pitched up. No worries this time to hit it over the infielders. I mean, they've got a realistic, very good chance of hitting over the top in the first 15 overs. They know if the ball is pitched up, the ball is coming nicely to the bat and they can really hit over the top. That's a good shot. Well, Habib Bashar is the key. Oh, that was a beautiful delivery. Looks like it's a drop catch. That can really prove uh, expensive for the Pakistani team. Here was the chance to pick up the key batsman once again inside edging and Kamran Akmal wasn't that efficient behind the stumps big let off straightforward chance there for Kamran Akmal but did not grasp that so it's all happening uh, in the very first over they've got a drop catch they've picked up three runs in uh, by Mohamed Ashraful so the Bangladeshi batsman needs to be a little bit more careful here they just cannot throw the chances away. Well, the intention uh, is shown by Ashraful that uh, he's going to take the aerial route. He got off the mark, just hitting the ball towards mid-wicket in the air. And on that occasion, he was looking to hit the ball over mid-off. But checked his stroke at the last moment. It's going to be taken. The batsman is walking. And Omar Gul has done the job. Providing the Pakistani team a breakthrough straight away in the first over. Two one days, and he has managed to pick up Ashraful in his first over. Nicely taken by Enzamam ul -Hak. Again, Mohammad Ashraful uh, trying to play a stroke on the outside of the off stump, a little bit of width. Put him straight to the Enzamam. Not a very easy uh, catch to pick by the umpires, but. Uh, was easier for Mohamed Ashraful to just walk off. Bangladesh, 5 for 1. He's been very successful with the ball in his hand. Now he's required to do a job with the bat in his hand. Another one. Another streaky stroke from uh, Habib Basha. Clearing the wicket keeper. Well, he's made up his mind. He wants to play strokes. And lucky on that occasion that trying to pull that one. Just getting the top edge and going the, over the outstretched hand of Akmal. It's been a good over from Shabir. Shot delivery. 
and he's hit the ball into the gap. Strong chase from Jamezia, doing well. Brilliant fielding effort from him, saving a run for his team. End of the over, two overs gone. Bangladesh, 12 for one. So it's cool to Rajan Saleh. Well, that's the third one in, a, in just a couple of deliveries, third wide. This time around, it's Omar Gul. But most of the fast bowlers, they find it very difficult to control the white new ball. Swings a lot in the air. And they get a lot of deviation of the track as well. Just collapsing a little bit in his action, Omar Gul, on that occasion. And he knows it. Urging himself to concentrate hard. That's a better delivery. Ably played by Rajan Saleh. He's been very impressive, Rajan Saleh. He's making every Bangladeshi proud. Shown a lot of cuts, the youngster. And today he has shown us that uh, if he's required to ball a few overs for his team, under pressure, he can really deliver. Very useful player, Rajan Saleh. Only one slip in place. Oh, that's a beautiful shot. On the up, did not bother to run even. That is an absolutely good shot from Rajan Saleh. Picks up another boundary. Well, although he's not 100% fit, Rajan Saleh, but he's not uh, leaving the opportunities to hit the ball towards the boundary line. That was a quality stroke. The best Rajan Saleh has played so far in this innings. And these Bangladeshi batsmen, Habib Rubashar, along with uh, Rajan Saleh, making use of the hardness of the ball. In the air, and it's dropped. Second catch has been dropped of the bat of uh, Habib Rubashar. And this time, it's Omar Gul. That was a sitter. He really camped under that ball nicely, but failed to hold on to that one. That's a huge let off. Well, this is the second time Habib Bashar has been dropped in his innings. Now it's very important for him to make use of those lapses by the Pakistani fieldsman. That's a wide delivery. No hesitation from the umpire, Leem Dar. He's been kept very busy by the Pakistani mm. bowlers. That was a drop chance. Easy catch at this level. Making the mess of the things. Omar Gul at third man. Time for the cha change of commentators in the commentary box. The most popular commentators, Sanjay Manjareka and Ramiz Hassan Raja. Thank you, Amit. That's four. Well, obviously, Shabir Ahmed uh, not yet uh, getting his focus back after that drop catch. He was furious when the catch was dropped, so still trying to regain his composure. There was a wide ball immediately after the drop catch. And this one straying down on leg stump. Easy pickings for Rajan Saleh. Well, quite a few drop catches in this match. Uh, as many as, if I count them right. And if you consider Inzimam's cotton bowl chance as a catch drop. At least five catches dropped so far in this match. I just wonder whether it's got something to do with the background here. Whether it's a difficult sighting ground for fielders. But the fielding or rather the catching has been below par from both sides. A bit of an experience there probably. Now he's wiping his hands, he's uh, wiping his forearms, he's not wearing any wristbands. And uh, the conditions are very humid. It could uh, be quite possible that uh, that ball was slipped out of his hand because of excessive sweat on his palms. And I think he'll learn a thing or two as he progresses in international cricket that these little things mean a great deal in uh, Test match or one-day internationals. 
it just popped out. Greasy hands not been able to control the ball. The position uh, of the hands and the body was not great also, but it was uh, such a sitter that everyone expected him to take it. It was such a sitter that he was almost in a sitting position, taking that catch. Rajan Saleh continues to impress one and all. What is admirable about his technique is that ball was about middle and leg, and he still presents a straight bat. It's so very difficult actually to find the gate or the gap between bat and pad. Look at this straight bat presented. Never gets across the line. Look at that high elbow. That's good technique. I think he allows the ball to come to him. Doesn't jump in the ball. Stays in his crease when he's playing off the back foot. So he uses the crease well also at times. A bit like Arvinda De Silva. 44 for one. For it, 50 comes up for Bangladesh. Time for Jamal as a captain. Because in the first match, it was too easy for him. And uh, Pakistan is looking for a captain. So, it will be interesting to see how he handled his bowlers. Driven beautifully through the covers once again by Rajan. And it's going to cross the fence once again. But well, immediately after uh, Hafiz was hit through covers for four runs, Inzimam al -Haq started walking to him. He's been hit three times towards the boundary line so far, Mohammad Hafiz. And he's into the second over of his spell. Trying to calm everybody, Inzimam al -Haq. Eight of the over. 16 overs they are gone Bangladesh having a good start 78 for one there and has Shoaib Malik the second spinner and this time flick and flick beautifully and there's no chance for the square leg fielder to stop that one four runs Rajan Saleh is moving closer to pick up his first 15 in one-day internationals. That was nicely whipped off his pads towards the square leg boundary. He's been superb, Radhan Saleh. He's only faced 60 deliveries. Hit eight boundaries. And at the same time, the thing which he has done, which was required to rotate the strike. Whenever there was an opportunity, he played the ball with the soft hands into the gap and picked up singles. He's been ably supported by Habib Basha, who has lived dangerously. But the important thing, he's making the Pakistani ballers pay for it. There's a mix-up. It's going to be run out. Oh, missed. A direct throw could have been a run out for Bangladesh. And that is to Rajan Saleh, who's batting brilliantly. And the fielder was Shoaib Malik. Well, that ball was hit hard. And Shoaib Malik reacting very well. Not finding the target. It was wayward. <laughs> this is going to be very close. And he's been given. He planted his foot outside the off stump. And uh, Abdul Razak getting a hint of reverse swing, surprising the batsman. This is the important breakthrough. The Pakistanis they were working hard for. And it came through Abdul Razak. Very important wicket for Pakistan at this stage. It's 87 for one. And that ball hit him straight on the middle stump. A little bit of movement, reverse swing. And he was out. And uh, Bangladesh lost the second wicket. Habibul Basha out for 25, and Bangladesh 87 for two. Tushar Imran flown into Pakistan for this one-day series. 
wasn't that effective in the first game caught himself out on a duck and the reason why he has arrived at the crease because Habib Basha has been adjusted like before there was no doubt about in anybody's mind that was a very good decision from the umpire Russell Tiffin well this is what happened when you play cross the line his bat was going towards the mid on our uh, mid wicket side he's showing the bat but I don't think so the ball hit the bat he was uh, right plumb in front another good ball by Razak the ball is coming in now Razak using his experience 87 for two Bangladesh still have a good chance has done very well so far Abdul Razak has only given one opportunity to the batsman to hit the ball towards the boundary line but that too was a very brave stroke from Rajan Saleh other than that he has been very consistent like that once again bending his back surprising the batsman with some extra pace of the Razak on that occasion very well bowled that's the experience of Razak that ball came quick a little bit of height there he's bowling very well he got the breakthrough for Pakistan and uh, he's the fifth bowler used by Imzamam so far still have an option of uh, Junezia who is the sixth bowler a medium pacer and he's bowling that shot across the line lovely bowling by Razak right on the target and Pakistan get another wicket a bad stroke was on the cards because uh, Tushar Imran didn't get off the mark after 13 deliveries he was uh, frustrated took his chances but he's been cleaned up by Abdul Razak knocking the middle stump off and Bangladesh they are in trouble 90 for 3 they are Alok Kapali had an ordinary day in the field in the innings of the Pakistani team it's got a decent uh, strike rate in one day internationals but the average is not that great his highest has been 89 not out and that was against West Indies that was nicely played Abdul Razak was looking for a Yorker well after that wicket Razak took of uh, Taswar Imran this is the one playing across the line it's a bad shot on this occasion a lot of overs were left to play straighter and after this wicket uh, everybody's wondering where the experience of uh, Bangladesh gone the Javed Umar was there and Nan Sakao was there they played so well in the test matches and I'm sure they're going to miss them that's a beautiful stroke from Rajan Saleh but Abdul Razak has brought the Pakistani team back in the experience of uh, Bangladesh gone the Javed Umar was there and Nan Sakao was there they played so well in the test matches and I'm sure they're going to miss them that's a beautiful stroke from Rajan Saleh but Abdul Razak has brought the Pakistani team back in this game with some quality bowling picked up two wickets in a span of nine deliveries without conceding a run he's one utility cricketer you can have as a captain in your team can chip in with the ball as well as the bat slow delivery nicely played to pick up a single 21 overs gone Bangladesh 93 for 3 11 fours and a total of 96 so it's been attractive cricket from the visitors 89 dot deliveries if Bangladesh can keep on taking uh, the singles and twos that are available I think they can still put pressure on the opposition these runs do not uh, look a great deal they do not look menacing enough for the opposition but in the end it uh, keeps on uh, totaling up keeps the uh, strike turning over 
just like that. Safe cricket. I think uh, this is where Bangladesh need to be careful here. They lost three wickets. Need to play safe cricket for a while. Just look to pick up those uh, singles and twos. Not look for uh, heroics. Not look for uh, big boundaries. And stay within reach. 5.3 runs per over. Still achievable, provided they have wickets in hand. And provided Rajan Saleh plays uh, an intelligent innings. That's nicely played by Alok Kapali. Played with a much straighter bat. That's the reason he got the gap. With the extra cover to pick up two comfortable runs. So that's uh, Bangladesh 100 for three. Brings up the 100 with the two runs in the cover region. That's a lovely drive from Alok Kapali. Just goes on to show that this track is still good for batting. On the rise. And the ball flew away very quickly off the mat. Nice shot. Good early call from Rajan Saleh. He's a good judger of a run. Not only does he run well between the wicket, but uh, whenever there's an opportunity, he would call early. And that is a secret. And a positive call. Yes or no. At times, batsmen uh, do have... Uh, Various methods of calling, wait, 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 can be confusing. It can be interpreted, interpreted wrongly. Yes or no can help. That means I feel that as long as the run rate does not go over 6 or 6.5, it's still reachable by the Bangladeshi batsmen, even though they've lost uh, two very quick wickets. The last wicket was a Tushar Imran, again disappointing with the bat. But uh, they should look forward from here. Alok Kapali and Rajan Saleh. That's well played. End of the over. Bangladesh, 100 for 3. His line generally in Multan was pretty good. He gets the ball right up. As a newcomer, you've got to simplify so many things. The arena is big, the pressure is there. Massive crowd here in Faslabad, as was in Multan. You can easily be overawed by the situation. So you need to simplify your thinking. Keep the ball nice and up. That's much better on target. I think that is uh, what will be required from Junezia at this stage. Well, Junaid Zia only in his uh, second one there. Just pulled two deliveries. I think the, the point that you were making, Ramiz, is like the line and length. He needs to go stump to stump. That's what, what it matters in one-day cricket. And if he can pick the line up and just settle down to a nice rhythm, it'll be interesting to see how he comes out of it. Rajan Saleh will run hard as he always does. These little things uh, do point out to uh, making him uh, a wonderful player. Running between the wicket, his approach. He hasn't thrown away his wicket yet. He's tried his level best out there. Ah, oh, way swinger. Good delivery. He's got to keep the ball just about there. Good stuff. Just away movement of the wicket. Must have pitched on the seam. And just cut away nicely. Well, Inzamam has been uh, pretty confident of Junet Zia. He's given him uh, five fielders inside the circle. He's got the liberty to put one back, but he's not done that. He's got the mid-off and mid-on up in the circle. Alok Kapali. Will be looking to hit this time around a little bit of width straight to the point feeler just pick up a comfortable singer no no boundary now for eight overs 
Pakistan have uh, restricted the boundaries. Rajan Sal is still out there and uh, he'll be the key player. A little bit of width and uh, he, uh, well, I was thinking he got away with it, but Russell Tiffin, late gesture from him of a wide ball. Fair one. Just a little bit too wide. So the field placement that was I was talking about to you, Ramiz, is that he's got uh, mid off and mid on inside the circle. So he has the chance to hit over the top, but he has to make sure that the ball is pitched up and you get a nice free of arms. Four off the over, 110 for three. Not out. Lovely shot. Drive through the offside. First boundary in 10 overs. And it was a lovely drive by Alok Kapali. In the slot for the swing to come down heavily. Well, does he play that shot really well? I mean, he played a similar, similar kind of shot which fetched him two runs, but this time around, what a shot. Full face of the blad and the elbow of right. That is an excellent shot. Youngster watching this back home could definitely learn a few tricks from him, Alok Kapali. Good balance. Instantly, after being hit for a boundary, Inzamam has walked to the bowlers, and that's a good sign. Okay. And that's what slow turn does. It gets you to miscue the lofted shots. Safe as a house on that occasion, Yohana. So the pinch hitter, Murtaza, fails to deliver. Yeah, that's why he was sent in, Murtaza, ahead of a good established uh, batsman. To just increase the run net, and there he went after Shreya Malik. There was some spin on the ball. The ball came slightly slower than he'd expected. Tried to play over mid dawn. The ball took the top edge of the bat, going towards the deep square like Yusuf Johanna. Took a very well judged catch. So another big blow for Bangladesh. Motaza going back with one. Bangladesh is one thirty-three for five. Well, here's another unexpected promotion. Mushfiqur Rahman, who batted a number nine in the last match comes at the fall of the fifth wicket. So this is the scorecard. Only one player, Saleh, who's uh, played with uh, some confidence and some quality cricket shown by Saleh. And Omagul back into attack. is very close and he's gone. I think it's not a bad decision. The batter is very disappointed gives a long look back at the umpire. He continues to look at the stumps as we watch the Pakistanis celebrate. Umar Gul has this early angle, but I think the impact was about off in middle that would have gone on to hit the stumps. Here's another look. Not very wide off the crease. Where is that heading? I had a great chance of that, just crashing onto middle and leg. I think that's a good decision. Mushfiqur Rahman gone for a duck. Bangladesh 133 for six. On the green line is the initial required rate, which is 4.9. And the yellow line, or the yellow the worm that you see there, is the current run rate, which has dipped below the required rate. Edged and gone. Nod of the head and the finger goes up. Shoaib Malik continues to trouble the Bangladeshi batsman. It's time for Khalid Mahmood, the captain, to take a walk. Oh, it looks all over for the Bangladesh team now. The skipper losing his wicket to Shoaib Malik. He's trying to play that streaky stroke through that slip area. Got a tickle and Kamran Akmal took a very good catch. And here is the finger of Aleem Dar. So Khalid Mahmood walking back, got out on four Bangladesh, 138 for seven.
Saleh, by far the top scorer for Bangladesh, 64 of 93. And then two 25s from Bashar and Kapali is still out there. Athar Ali Khan and Ramiz Raja will take over commentary. Thank you, Sanjay. Bangladesh, uh, once again, disappointing uh, the crowd here. They were off to a promising start. But it's uh, just that Pakistani bowlers came back very strongly through uh, Umar Gul and uh, Abdul Razak and how well Shweb Malik has bowled. 3 for 23. Runs on the onside. Alok Kapali has just faced 10 balls in the last 5.1 overs. So he's been off strike. And uh, that uh, has not gone down too well with uh, Bangladesh. They're chasing a target and they want Alok Kapali to be on strike. Thinking for a quick single and getting it at the end. Right. It has been a pretty disappointing performance from Bangladesh. Quite a few soft dismissal, especially from uh, Rajan Saleh, was well set, looking very good. And the batting order that uh, Dave Watmore chose to play in this uh, one day did not come off. So it's uh, Khalid Mashud to the rescue. Six point six runs per over. That will be difficult. Rajan Saleh looked very matured out there, but the rest of the batsmen have not fallen the example set out by the youngster. And they've been immaturish with their shot selection. They panic. And the rhythm uh, was jolted when Rajan Saleh was out. And Zamam should be uh, enjoying himself out there. A victory in the first uh, one day at Multan. And he's sensing win again here. I think Rajan Saleh did play his part, but uh, Habibul Basha was up to the mark as well. They put on 82 for the second wicket. And uh, the decision that went against uh, Habibul Basha might have been the turning point because he was set, well set. He was in a rich vein of forms. But uh, Tantas had different ideas. Nevertheless, it's back to. The present situation where Bangladesh struggling to get to that park. That's a nice shot. Played very late, straight to mid on, just with fetch him a single. End of the over. Bangladesh, 142 for seven. Second wicket between Saleh and Basha getting Bangladesh 82. And Saleh was involved um, in a fourth wicket. Good effort as well. Kapali and Saleh putting up. Another partnership. It's just that the spark went away from Bangladesh the moment Rajan Saleh got out. There's too much pressure on the young player. You can't expect miracles from him. He's just started his international career and he's looked the part. But someone needs to support him out there. It's been a magnificent effort from Shweb Malik. How well is bowled? Three for 24. And came at a stage when Bangladesh were uh, looking for runs. So he was under pressure. A couple of no balls uh, didn't damage his confidence. 
He's made them look messy. Well, he's been getting some assistance from the wicket, but he's bowled beautifully. He's got the ball to turn. He's got the ball which has moved away from the bat. And he's been very strict on his line and length. That's the reason he's picked up three wickets. Another one in the offer. Oh, maybe a little bit better effort there from the fielder. Could have had another wicket in the pocket for Bangladesh. But this time he survives. Well, he had to uh, attempt this with uh, aggression in his mind. But the aggression was missing because uh, the last few paces had to be aggressively uh, notched up. A couple of runs, the straighter one was read well. Well, the fielder had to make a quick decision here whether to go for this catch or restrain himself so that the ball doesn't go over the boundary rope one forty six for seven this is fighting cricketer but uh what more had another other ideas did not come off well it's all about partnership that's what I discussed earlier with you Ramiz that uh, once you if you're chasing a target of 244 runs there needs to be somebody who has to hold ends and build a partnership he's been impressive Shabir Ahmed Ball with control and he's got the ball to jag around closer to the stumps and then that uh, natural movement away from the bat. He's got a bit of pace and bounce because he's tall, hits the ball hard. I've seen him to grow in confidence uh, from uh, Karachi. In fact, he had a wonderful test match debut. Picked up eight wickets in his first test match. 17 in the test series he's been the real find I would say along with Umar Gul in the bowling uh, department for Pakistan yes he's been quite impressive but he's failed to pick up a wicket he's won a pretty good line in length and this one there that's three on the dot that he has uh, played at it and missed it. Well, uh, Ramiz, I think the, both these uh, bowlers, Omar Gul and uh, Shabir Ahmed, uh, making their debuts, would be much more tested against the South Africans than the Bangladesh. South African having the power to dominate uh, the test matches. So it'll be a good testing time for these youngsters. And the positives uh, of, from these uh, series, the one days and the test match should definitely come out in a better way and a positive way against the South Africans yes this would have been a good confidence booster for some of these young players this series slip being uh, employed by Enzimam he's beaten the bat uh, just on one occasion in the over that's uh, played in the air away from the fielder nicely timed and that has run away that boundary also raises back Bangladesh's 150, 94 more required. Clean hit. Well, they've got more. They need more than one uh, boundary in each over to, to reach to that over target. Target of 244, but that was beautifully placed. It's just a nice soft chip. But he had enough on the bat and the, making sure that Fila inside the circle didn't have any chance on that one.
He's got a very aggressive run-up. Shabir Ahmed is tall and normally you don't associate. Quick run-up with uh, tall, lengthy, fast bowlers. He's got the same uh, built, same structure as uh, Joel Garner or uh, Kirk Lee Ambrose, but they didn't run up to the wicket as aggressively as he does. One fifty two for seven. Ninety two more required. Bangladesh uh, will be hard pushed to get there. They've lost wickets. And so, once again, Pakistan, um, who earlier looked uh, in a bit of problem, now easing their way through. Alok Kapali not out on thirty two now. He has to uh, get to his 50 to get some confidence now. Along with Rajan Saleh, he's the other youngster who's uh, been impressive for Bangladesh. Well, Kapali uh, was struck on his uh, eyebrow during one of the test matches. He got a few stitches there, but he's not shown that he's uh, afraid of going behind the right line of the ball. That's a good shot over the top of the cover. He's really nicely measured that one. Just a nice chip again this time, fetching him two runs. All important one. It is still there for Bangladesh. As you mentioned, it's a seven runs and over required. So if it, they still have a chance if these two batsmen can put up a decent partnership here. End of Shoaib Malik's stint. Three for 34, 159 for seven. So Alok Kapali would be eyeing uh, that area to go uh, probably over in Zamam's uh, head. And uh, well, will that be taken? Yunus Khan is getting underneath there and he's uh, picked up his first international wicket. Sigh of relief for uh, Junaid Zia. And sigh of relief for uh, Yunus Khan also. It was a difficult catch. The ball went high in the air here to run back. Not easy. He really had to steady himself. Looking for that chip shot maybe to uh, go over mid on. There you see Yunus Khan steadying himself and then uh, catching it. Just managing to hold on to that one. So Junaid Zia picks up his very first one-day national wicket in the second uh, one there. Hello, Kapali. Perhaps a missed opportunity here for Bangladesh. Uh, 243 was chaseable, uh, but in the end, falling well short.